Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, we're going to, well, I'm going to blood type myself to show you how to use one of these take-home kits and talk to you a little bit about blood typing. Um, I'm going to open up the kit. These kits, you can find them online, um, usually for around $10. I found them on Amazon and another place called Home Science Tools. This is the actual card inside of a foil package. I'll open that up when we're ready to go. This is a plastic pipette. It will need for water. This is a plastic bag that has a cotton ball and some spatulas in it to collect the water. Alcohol pad, a little device to poke your finger, and then a little plastic cover that you put over the blood after it's all dried so you can save it for eternity. This last thing, and I always pull this out last, maybe it's because I'm a guy, um, if all else fails, read the directions, right? Um, these are the directions on how to do it. I highly recommend reading through these directions. They even got little pictures to help you, but read through them at least twice before you do this um, in order to help make sure you don't make any mistakes and mess up the test. If you paid for it, then you'll save some money if you make sure you do it right the first time. Okay, I'm ready to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the card. When you open this, be careful because this foil packaging, sometimes it wants to go sideways um, and it's so tough to rip that you might end up ripping the card. So here's the card. And this is actually what we're gonna do the test on. Notice that on the card, you have these circles, one labeled anti-A and then anti-B, anti-D, and then a control. In the anti-A circle, there are antibodies against A antigen. In the anti-B circle, there are antibodies against B antigen. And then in the anti-D circle, there are antibodies against RH antigens. This is the one that's going to tell us whether we're positive or negative. And then lastly, the control. And you'll notice that there's something dried in there as well. That solution that they dried in there contains everything else that these other ones do except no antibodies. So. If this one reacts, we know that either something went wrong at the factory or we made a mistake when we were applying the blood. So that's the card and a quick rundown of the card. Um, the other tools that I have here, alcohol pad to clean off my finger before I poke it. I'll open up this little plastic bag. It's got a cotton ball in it to stop the bleeding when I'm done. And then I've got these little spatulas and I'm gonna prep those. There's a spatula for each of these little circles, and you'll see how I use them in a little bit, but they're gonna be used to collect the blood, basically, and then to stir it in the circles. So there's my spatulas ready to go. I'm done with the plastic bag. Um, oh, the pipette. This is a little plastic pipette. We use this to put a little bit of water on each of the circles. So I think I'm actually ready to do that right now. There's two things that the kit doesn't come with. One is water. Just a little cup of tap water is fine. Um, and of course, the other thing it doesn't come with is your blood, which you'll have to poke your finger to get. The directions tell me to put two drops of water onto each of these little colored drops, dried drops that are on the slide. So I'm going to do that now. Whoops, I missed. There's my two drops. I missed with one of them. That'll be okay. One, two. One, two. One, two. Um, the importance of this is it starts to dissolve the solution here, um, and I'm going to do this just to make sure water gets on there right even though I messed up, but I'm not going to use this pipette again. I don't want to cross-contaminate, and I'm going to throw my pipette away. But it dissolves the solution on the solutions on the card, so the antibodies come out of that solution and are ready to go when the blood shows up. I'm ready to poke my finger, but first I have to clean it. So a little alcohol pad to clean off the finger. I always pick my middle finger. I figure it's the one that swears it deserves it. I'm going to dry off the alcohol a little bit. Um, one of the things you might want to do, make sure your hands are warm before you do this and make sure that it, they're good and pink. You get good blood down there. You don't want to poke and then find out that you can't get any blood. Here's the poker and here's how you use it. Twist that green thing that's inside of it until you can get it out and just pull it out and throw it away. And this thing is now ready to go. Warning about this poker, if you get this kind of poker, um, it is a one-shot deal. It will only poke you once. I haven't found a way to reset it. So um, 
Make sure you do it right the first time. Push hard and give yourself a good poke. And now I've got a good blood sample. Um, and this is now, there's no way to use it again, so it's gone. The next thing to do once your blood starts, grab one of these little spatulas and get a little sample. It doesn't take much, just a little drop there, and set it in the liquid. And then do that for each of the spatulas. Blood sample. And blood sample. Now I'm done with the bleeding, I can put a cotton ball over my wound. And the next thing to do is to pick up each one of these spatulas in turn and stir up the sample and spread it out in that circle for 10 seconds. And then toss the spatula. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got to stabilize the card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're done with that mixing. Now we need to pick up the card carefully. And you may notice that one of my circles is already starting to react. Um, the next thing to do is we're going to tilt the card slightly in the four directions. And we're going to hold them tilted for 10 seconds in each direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm going to make sure the liquid is pretty even, and we're done. Um, notice what's happening in the circles. I hope you can see it well. We don't see a reaction in circle A. And if you recall, circle A contained antibodies against A antigen. The lack of a reaction there tells us that on my red blood cells, there are no A antigens. The next circle, circle anti B, that had antibodies against B antigens. Since there's no reaction here, that means that there are no B antigens on my blood. At this point, just with these two circles, we can see that I don't have B antigens and I don't have A antigens. That makes my blood type O. Let's go to the next circle. That is the anti-D circle. It has antibodies against RH in it, and we do see agglutination there. Agglutination, again, means um, the clumping of cells due to antibodies. Those antibodies against RH bound to the RH antibodies on the surface of my red blood cells and cause my red blood cells to clump up. So you see those little bits of red clumps in there. That's a positive test for RH. That means that my blood type is O because of what happened over in these two circles, but it's O positive because it's positive for RH. And then lastly, in the control circle, remember there were no antibodies on this circle when we started. We should never see a reaction in this circle. If we do see a reaction in this circle, then that means that the test is bad and we have to do it again. We'd have to throw out that test. So am I done bleeding? Yes. Um, so that's how blood typing is done with these Eldenkon cards. Um, the only other thing um, down the road if you want to use this plastic piece to cover it, um, obviously write on it first. In fact, in the directions, it says to do that as number one. Write down your personal information and such. If you want it on there, do that as number one. Um, at this point, what I can do if I want this card later on down the road is um, I will set it somewhere safe where nobody's going to mess with it, and I will leave it overnight at least to make sure that... Uh, it's dried completely. And once I'm absolutely positive that it's dried completely, I can take the backing off of this plastic sticker. It's a clear plastic sticker to kind of laminate the card. And then I'll apply that clear plastic over the top of the blood, and that'll keep it safe and visible for a long time. Now that's it for blood typing. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave questions in the comments down below. 
and thank you once again for watching.